I want to show you guys something really special. So last year, I took some blue oyster mushrooms that I got growing on a cocoa core substrate that I did. Anyways, so I put the mycelium in between this log, cutting it in half fresh. So this was a solid log. I cut it fresh. I had just cut down my maple tree and I put this in here. Um, anyways, you can see the mycelium has been, I'm pulling back blackberries, disturbing the earth. And you can see the mycelium has been growing out. And what's cool is I came to the edge of the growth and you can see that it's actually grown through the straw here that I had put down and look at that this is all the blue oyster this is the edge of the mat it just hit this straw and it's like going like crazy and it's all coming from this log and you can see it's growing out here as well you can come into this wood chip and you can just see as you dig into it all that white down in there look at that that's solid if you break into it, see? You see that? Look how solid white that is. It's just all oyster, mushroom, mycelium, just growing like crazy through this wood chip. So I can just take this and throw it in more wood chip and have it grow. And in fact, when I pull the duck bedding out, that's exactly what I'm doing. All the bedding that's coming out of the aviary with the ducks and the pigeons, I'm taking these blue oyster mat that's just expanding like crazy and I'm putting that into you can see right next to the cherry tree the wood chip there and that's getting it to just expand in there as well that's the last batch that I just pulled out and you can see over here as we grow as we go don't mind the war zone because the RV project is coming along, but it's not done. And we're still in the demolition. Winter was my demolition. Anyways, here you can see this was uh, Douglas fir. And I did the same thing here. The neighbor cut down his gigantic tree. I chipped all this up. Or actually, they brought in a chipper and they chipped this and I grabbed it. I've, I have my own chipper where I've done some, but look at Look at that. Look at the mushroom just growing through there. Blue oyster does not really care. It is just, it's crazy. So I just threw chunks of it in here. When I wheelbarrowed it over, I went over there, grabbed the chunk, threw it in here, dumped the wheelbarrow on. And I haven't had fruiting yet to verify 100% that this is blue oyster. But with how vigorous it's growing, it's like, it, 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 it is. I mean, it just is growing so perfectly. Hey, ladies. Yeah, see, everybody's happy, 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 happy. So in here, I went ahead and did the same thing. This has been rained down. This is their bedding. And so I threw somewhere in here, I'll have to find it, a chunk. There it is. See, it's already starting. Oh, wow, it's already starting to grow in here. So I threw some chunks in here. And now they're already starting to spread and grow. And this was just a few days ago. But all this, whoa, look at that chunk. Look at it. Once it got wet, boom, it just starts going like crazy. Look at, there's more. I didn't even put that much in there. So, well, look at, there's another chunk. Dang, it's just like going like crazy. But all that rich nutrient from the manure in that wood chip, and then you throw the mushrooms in there, and boom, it just super just all that nutrient goes like crazy with the mushrooms and then we can take that and we can put it underneath our trees and make this nice area like this so these blueberries do not like this current condition your blueberries don't really want to grow with grass because it chokes them out it doesn't mind the strawberries because strawberries do a great job of just like putting like little pins down they don't really have very aggressive root systems. Like say like this grass, you see like they're trying to pull this grass out here. You see how its root system is just like tied in into every aspect that it can get. Well this chokes out your blueberries. So you don't want grass growing in your blueberries. So that's why 
we put strawberries down and you see they're going and they're growing thicker and thicker. So what we're gonna do is pull out these clumps of grass, let those strawberries come in here, and then we're gonna take that pile of mulch and we're gonna make this a nice, beautiful hedged mulch, nice edge with the mulch and going all the way around here through all the blueberries. And then right here as well for this blueberry patch. And by pulling that grass out and putting that mulch down, it's really gonna let these strawberries go like crazy. So I planted like four strawberries around each plant. As you can see, you can see like the mother base, but then they send off these shoots. And so every year you're getting more and more strawberries popping out on these shoots. And you see how these shoots are growing, getting fresh little roots going into the soil like that. You see how they're just nice and gentle? Like it's literally like surviving on the surface just with those little strawberries there. You see, they'll start going out and they can get these real long tubes like this. You see, this is one that I, I weeded out. And so each one of these will grow another clump of strawberries. And these make some really delicious strawberries. Even these little ones that you think are like gone and dead, no. Nah, they're still like, you can get some, you'll get strawberries off of this this year planting it. So this flower bed just went through and tilled these are party peonies right here. Look at the size of some of these tubulars from these peonies. And these absolutely massive roots. Look at that. I mean, if they were edible, which I don't know, maybe they are, but I don't know that much about peonies to know. I mean, you could eat that, but they're just so huge. So pulling that out, I'm able to take the grass out, pull the bulbs, find all the different cool flowering plants. And now I can plant those back in there get a nice little cycle and breaking their roots up helps them not be so congested and they'll pop out even more plants. And what's awesome about that is now some of those I can put into pots and I can go ahead and add value by selling uh, peonies when they start to bloom and go into flower here shortly. You can see there's already new growth starting. Look at this, look at all those little strawberry blooms. They didn't make it, but Look at all of them coming in. There's even fresh blooms coming in. It's a nice, beautiful mother. She's sending out, she sends out little shoots too. You find them, but the grass like tries to choke everything. So the key is getting the grass out. So that way everything else can grow. The strawberries can grow. Everything can come in nicely. What I want to show you up here is I planted one strawberry plant one right here <clears throat> and so this strawberry plant shot out made this strawberry plant this strawberry plant shot out made this one made this one you see coming in here right now we can see going off the other side this shoot came in here which then formed this one then went around to form that one and then went on to form the one forming right there and then we can follow this one here. This was the first shoot that shut out. This shoot came over here, planted this one, which subdivided and created this one, which came over here and created all of these, and then came around and looped back around over to here. So it's like literally filling itself in in that area. Whereas this also continued on to form the strawberry, and then move on to that one, and to that one where it actually grew a loop planting another one there and going on to there. And then from there, it moved behind the rows. So you can see that this one strawberry, which I planted last spring, has literally tried to take up this whole area as a ground cover. And it's a nice ground cover crop that will also produce money or food for substance. So you can sell your strawberries or you can simply eat them yourself which that's what I do a small homestead like this is designed to feed yourself and maybe make some extra selling herbs or different things like that look at right here so I was showing you that compost the mushroom compost and look at that I took that chip you can see and put it down here look at this see this grubs in here this is food I can feed this to my ducks all the worms in here, look how black this soil is. This soil is completely black. 
and this was dirt that I dug up that looked brown like this. So if you notice on the surface, you see how it still looks brown? But underneath, everywhere is black and full of mushrooms. And the reason for this is, is when I made this mound here, what I did was I dug the pond and I took the dirt and I put it here. So what I did, I put a layer of dirt down, filled it, and then I just simply put that inoculated wood chip. That is it. Inoculated wood chip down here all around and then I planted my plants so there is a little bit of soil from planting the plants that came with the pots um, but other than that all this open soil in the middle as you can see like it's literally starting to form and turn black underneath like you get these chunks of it if you can get down off the mud the top layer yeah because it's so hard and dig your way down to the wood okay, let me find a softer spot maybe in the side yeah. softer so here you can see the side you can dig down get into the finding all the wrong spots of course where's the wood chip you gotta find wood chip uh, right in here see how the soil gets a little bit darker and that wood chip in here this is all like sand and just wood chip and there's way more wood chip over there than there is here it kind of went lighter over here but you can see the mushrooms are growing into this wood chip you see all the fungus growth throughout so even if this look wow see like the plant see this is all in a symbiotic relationship these are there's mycorrhizal mushrooms in here as well and that is all feeding nutrients and the blue oyster they they feed nutrients as well even though it's not a mycorrhizal it's breaking down the food all around it's not eating the plant until the plant dies because it's not a parasitic mushroom it's an opportunist mushroom. And so all that nutrients that's breaking down, regardless if there's a symbiotic relationship directly to the roots, as far as being a mycorrhizal mushroom, it at least breaks down the nutrients and those nutrients are readily available for the plant. So the only real difference is, uh, like oyster mushrooms aren't shoving a needle into the root of the plant uh, to extract the sugars. It's simply just, eating what's in the ground and then making that micro available for the plant. So the plant still benefits um, and it has less of a draw to the, uh, to its sugars. So, um, which mycorrhizal mushrooms are very important and everything too, but just another benefit of a decomposition mushroom, uh, having them in your garden, because everybody talks about mycorrhizals, but decomposers, um, they're extremely important because your mycorrhizals are breaking down things in the soil, but they're more of a neural kinetic way, uh, more communication and more of a nutrient distribution across plants. Uh, so a mycorrhizal mushroom will allow this fig here to give nutrients to that fig there, you know, so they can work together. Whereas uh, a decomposing mushroom will simply just break down all the matter and then those nutrients are available right there so which is really neat <clears throat> so having a combination is important yeah so look at that that's isn't that amazing all that fungus is growing in here and see not hurting the roots at all just super white all around and this year after year is going to just keep producing more and more food and at some point these mushrooms will fruit and when they do it could possibly generate literally hundreds of dollars maybe even possibly thousands of dollars worth of food in a flush throughout here because if you notice we have the pile in the back there that's going we have this pile that's already starting here we have the other pile that's in the garden that we're mulching with and then everything's already been inoculated throughout so literally the entire yard is pretty much inoculated with mushrooms and then what's cool is the ducks are actually able to get in to those wood chips and they find grubs and bugs and different things on there and those worms that they're eating hold that mycelium in their gut so those mushrooms because they're they're going through eating on the mycelium as well getting different nutrients your vitamin b's different all kinds of different things you know worms eat mushrooms as well 
the mycelium. And so they go through and they're eating the worms, which are just loaded with it, which then they shit it out, spread it all over, literally all over. So it's getting to the point where it doesn't matter what you do here. If you dig into the soil, look at this, any place, I haven't even looked here, I'm just guessing. I know there's gonna be mycelium somewhere here. The girls go through this a lot, but look, see, even right here. See that, speckling? That's mycelium rolling through here. Yeah. You see, there's little speckles of it, a little bit more dormant, different kind of mushroom. I'm not sure what kind, but there is mycelium. Look at, see there, there's more white. More white, you see how it's breaking down? So, and this hasn't been inoculated with the oyster. It's just doing its own thing. If I had, it would probably be completely white in patches. And with that, I'll go ahead and end this little video and let you know that it's not just important to have mycorrhizal, but also, also decompo decomposing mushrooms because they will really allow a lot of nutrients to be broken down and feed your plants. You know, we can go into the garden and anywhere in the garden as well. It's just mushrooms everywhere, feeding the plants, breaking things down, making nutrients available. See, right here, they're just everywhere, everywhere. And with that, I wanna say thanks for joining. Like and subscribe and learn the fungus is the way to go when it comes to adding super nutrients into your soil, utilizing an ecosystem with birds, using their manure, their bedding. You can create so much food on just this little tiny plot. There's literally food growing all the way around the house. And that gives us so much food security. We have herbs here that can be dried into teas and sold. This land here, just this garden alone, can produce enough to live off of. And then with added value things, using the feathers for crafts, all kinds of things. There's so many income streams that adding all those little tiny ones that'll never make you rich together, but having literally hundreds of different things that make you money, whether it's teaching classes, showing people tours, spreading the knowledge, adding value products, selling your tomatoes or your canned goods or whatever it is, it detaches you and allows you to take control of your destiny and control of your own resources, which is most important of all. So like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.